You want to do a set nine rankings? Not yet, not yet. Hi everybody, JJ here. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick video talking about some of the ride lines, some of the better decks. This is more from my competitive mindset. This is to do with just overdress itself. Um, some of the stronger nations or some of the stronger archetypes that are being played right now at the moment or decks that you probably can take to BSF or BCS that are going to do really well there. Um, first things first, uh, we do have wings. Wings is getting support soon. Not yet. <laughs> Soon-ish. I'm going to put it in C. By the way, tier lists are very arbitrary. <laughs> the only thing I personally think that matters from my own mindset is uh, S, A, and B. C and D can still beat S, A, and B, but they got to work harder to do so. That's all I'm saying, right? If you want to argue and dispute that it should be higher or lower, then they're higher and lower in your mindset based on how you play them. I'm not a master of these archetypes. I don't know what the good choke points are. I'm giving off of my own experiences playing against the deck and playing with them. I've played with quite literally almost all the archetypes and these are my thoughts and my thoughts alone. What you think about it is a completely different to me and we don't have to agree about everything. That makes Vanguard so great. Okay, cool. So Wings, sadly enough, I don't think it's that strong, but it can beat people sometimes. Uh, Baron Magnus, has gotten some support recently, especially with the new orders and ride lines and stuff like that. I do think that it is a very, very good deck. I'm going to put it in A. Uh, I do think that Bastion is a B tier archetype. It can beat people, but it has to struggle a little bit. Uh, Mavsagra does have some new support, so it does allow it to push a little bit for extra pressure. And it is going to be getting some more support in set 9 and set 10, which does allow you to kind of recycle all of your orders and stuff. It's going to be really good in the future, but even now, it's already decent. Pretty good. <laughs> Drop Bastion because their community is dead. But I mean, as a deck themselves, I think it's still a good deck. Like, I think it can still, like, if you want to go with a team of three people and you have a friend who loves playing Bastion, they, they are allowed to play Bastion because if it goes first, it's very strong. It's super, super potent. Its defensive turns are a little bit on the weaker side, but I think, I think it's still pretty good. Um, I actually think that Bruce also falls around here as well. Grade 4 Bruce. If we're talking about Grade 3 Bruce, I think Grade 3 Bruce is higher due to the fact that you have Julian now, but I think Julian and this are basically inter interchangeable with themselves. It's based on how you play it and what your win conditions are. You have the Quenlu loop that allows you to double Quenlu on both of your attackers if you're playing with Eden, with Eden OTK, or you can go for grade four OT buff thing or deck out strategy with uh, <laughs> with the, the order that allows you to switch out four and draw cards and all that stuff. And plus, if you're going for the, the grade three line with Julians and stuff, you have a grade three play. So I prefer the grade three variant over the grade four. So I'm gonna slot the grade three higher at the moment. But that's due to my own testing with it, playing against it. It does still have an issue of being a grade 4 oriented deck, and a lot of decks launch out 4 attacks already on your first grade 3 turn, and Julian does alleviate that, and playing grade 4s in a meta that focuses more heavily in grade 3s, grade 4s are getting kind of preyed on, and especially there's Elementaria Sanctitude. If your opponent happens to have that, and some decks even hard keep it against some of these matchups, <laughs> it's going to be tough to deal with. I think it's a little bit weaker overall, but it does have some of the most expen explosive plays. All right, and then we have the... Uh, we have the board wipe deck. I think it falls on the same tier of C. Like, you clearing out, you're attacking all your opponent's units. There are a lot more decks now that need... This, unironically, this Clarissa deck... Unironically, play, praise on Eva. <laughs> I lost my fair share. Uh, I lost to my share, fair share of Bastion. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a pretty good archetype still. I think Clarissa, unironically, is pretty funny into Eva because you're constantly attacking their front row. It's funny. I don't know if it's the best, but it's funny as hell. Overlord S tier, because. Promo is pretty busted. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of good things about Eugene. I'm going to put it at the top of C right now, but it's a possibly a B-tier deck. 
especially now that it also has some restand itself and potential players. Ever very good. <laughs> very good archetype. Sadly enough, Ghosty Girls Felterosa is not that strong. I do think Flagberg is stronger than Bruce. A lot stronger than Bruce, especially with a lot of the newest support it's gotten. We do have... Is this Mimi? Is this the Restander? If this is a race to B or C. Is the Vanguard Restander? Okay, she goes higher then. She goes higher in comparison to these. But this is like... <laughs> this is an unexpected bully into a lot of these matchups. A lot of these archetypes actually need some really rare guards to stay on the board to be able to do stuff. Uh, Gravidia, um, top of A. It is a gatekeeper deck. If you can beat it, I think you're okay. Greedon, also around B and A. I think it's A tier deck. Powerful, sadly enough, the support it's gotten is not that strong. I don't want to talk about Hexorb. She goes here. <laughs> Another grade 4 deck. A lot of the grade 4 decks are currently going to be here chilling in B. I think these are strong decks still. Don't get me wrong. These are decks that if you're playing a 3 tournament, three player tournament and this is one of your teammates, I don't think you can go wrong with playing it. It can still beat people and you can still stack your triggers. You can still do some really pressuring plays. But a lot of rare guards nowadays and a lot of units these days on the top higher tier of these decks either bully your opponent's rear guards or launch so many multi attacks with so much pressure that just the 5k alone sometimes is just not sufficient enough. And Kyrie herself doesn't have that much in terms of defensive capabilities, so she gets bullied very early in the game. And even with like Melty and all those archetypes with friendship stuff, you need to hit your offensive over trigger for you to feel any form of impact with your deck sometimes. And a deck that is very <laughs> dependent on something like that feels a lot weaker in my eyes. Chaos, uh, with the new promo support and all the new card support it's gotten, it's actually a lot stronger. I don't know if it's like a, a BCS worthy archetype that can handle like six or seven rounds yet. But I do think it's around the realm of like, huh, if somebody plays it and does really well with it, I wouldn't be surprised, right? Uh, Lorena Roll, sadly enough, one of the weaker archetypes, but you can still pack a punch. Again, it's an archetype that you could slot it in your third slot with a player who likes to play it. Really good. Inlet Pulse is back. I think... I think this, this makes the deck kind of cracked. <laughs> I think this is, uh... We're back. We're back to Magnolia Supremacy. <laughs> We're back up here. Uh, MLB, sadly enough, same thing, same issue. Uh, Old Orphist, not that strong. Mahar Nirvana, I still think it's a relatively pretty good deck still. It doesn't surprise me if it tops or not. Uh, we do have, this is a deck that is very dependent on, do you have the promo? Yes, B tier. Don't you have the promo? C tier. <laughs> if you don't have the Blaster promo, you're, you're cruising for a bruise. Uh, so I'm going to put it. At the bottom of B for now, we have Rorowa. Unexpectedly, Tearful Malice, which is the grade 2 order for this archetype, especially with the grade 3 promo uh, and Inlet Pulse, does give this deck some reach. But I do feel like it's still missing something, which is the grade 3 um, Glitter unit to give it the 5 attacks that it needs. So I think I'm going to put it here in C for now. Until we get that, which is I think in set 9, or it's this set? I think it's set 9 though. I could be wrong, of course. And then of course, um, another brand gate archetype that's a pretty good gatekeeper, Seraph Snow. Uh, Tamayura still needs broken toys. Don't know when it's getting it yet, but when it does, it could possibly go to A. <laughs> it's really good. It becomes a whole lot better, but better with the, the glitter support that we're getting. So I still see it possibly in A. Then we have... That's the next set, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> and then we have Maple. So Radlina is this Friday. Yeah, so it could possibly be higher. It could be higher than B. Like higher around B. Next to Tamayura. I still think Tamayura is pretty good. A lot of people underestimate it. I think it's still a pretty good archetype. Um, then we have uh, ourselves Thigreya. I don't remember where Maple is coming out. I think Maple should be this set or next set. Again, this kind of affects the tier list of it. If it is actually this set for set 8, then it's A. I feel like the lower ends of A because it 
has two forms of way of being able to push or pressure your opponent with two columns, is it said, okay, then it's A. <laughs> it's a it's an A for me. Especially with the promo, the grade three promo, that a lot of people are not gonna be running it, but you do run the grade two order. You have like two extra cards now in the archetype that allow you allows you to push for more pressure. Um sadly enough. Gems are truly outrageous. She has not gotten any really viable support at the moment. She's not that strong. Hopefully, you could play her with a friendship package with like Melties and stuff, but she still lacks a lot. A lot. A lot of support. So now we have Zorga, base boy Zorga. Again, I you know I would like to put him A tier, but I feel he suffers from a lot of issues that a lot of archetypes suffer from. He tends to lose to himself a lot. <laughs> if you don't have enough orders, you lose to yourself a lot. And that's the issue it suffers from. Leonorn, uh, next to Zorga. I think he could beat any of the other archetypes lower on the list. It farms like huge amount of hand. Huge, huge hand. Like most of the Stoic Care archetypes does this. You just farm a bunch of cards. And then we have ourselves Yeva. Sadly enough, it is Eugene tier. <laughs> Does not have any counter charge. We also have Youthberg. Youthberg. Youthberg is also up here in S tier. Really good. B heroes for based heroes. If you resolve two orders from this deck to three orders from this deck, it is so good. But if you don't, it is C tier. <laughs> I will put it to the top of C tier though. It has the potential of like slapping people if you're underestimated. It's really cool. Uh, Drejult. I will put this on the C tier as well. Even with the support of Rocko Gore, as long as we don't have the other Grade 2 Restander, it did still suffer from the issue of being inconsistent. You are very much predicated on hitting your Rocko Gore, and Blitz CEO does need some more Blitz CEO support, so he also goes into C tier as well. Does not mean that it's impossible to beat people, but you gotta kinda high roll your opponent to do so. Uh, Shuten Doji. I don't know what this archetype does yet. I don't know what it does yet in this meta, or what it can really do yet. So I'm gonna kinda keep it here in D as an unknown. As a like, if it's an upset that happens and you clobber your opponent, then you know, good on you. <laughs> uh, Lukie, I actually will put it um, in C. It's like around Tamayura, kinda. They're kinda doing the same thing, but they are looking to achieve them in different facets. Because Tamayura can do 5 attacks, Lukia can do 5, 4 to 5 attacks as well. But they're achieving them in different mechanics. And especially since he's, I think Lukia is way better in premium than Overdress. But when we get more support for Lukia, it's going to be a whole lot better. But I will put this then in C tier for now. It's the first wave of support it's gotten, even with the addition of other cards that you can play with it. I, I don't see you having to incorporate Swirler, but you can if you want to. It's being reprinted soon, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> Arakite. I think a lot of people are underestimating this archetype. I think it's a lot better than a lot of people give credit for. Because your perfect guards are monsters. Boba Mine is a monster. Tektien, which is your order searcher, is also a monster. And your order chooses monsters in your drop zone and puts them into your order zone. So you can actually start looping through your deck. And also the grade one... <laughs> Also, the grade 1 that ever uses the grade 1 monster sends back your grade 3s back into your deck or your normal units back into your deck as well. If it's a grade 3, you get to draw a card. But you can recycle some of your units, that your monsters that you're using. It's really, really good. I don't uh, I don't think we have monster, the monster PGs yet. They're vanilla. They're vanilla PGs. Some people run like one or two copies and then they run like two copies of the Dragon PGs, the, the good ones. So you can choose which ones you want to rock. It comes out, it, it was, came out in the, uh, in the Sarah Snow Trial deck. It's also a monster. Hey, it's a searchable card. You can actually search it in Arakite. <laughs> it's good. So you actually have ways of tutoring PGs for you. It sucks have to pay the cost, the full-on cost of this card for PG, but if you're playing like, Elementaria, Sanctitude, and stuff like that, I think it's fine. It's fine. Um, Nerva. From what I heard, 
A lot of people think that she's S tier. I'll put her here for now, but I know she's a good archetype. She has like a lot of the good support because you have Drilling Angel, you have Painkiller Angel, you have a lot of the very good tools that makes Keter really good already. And it allows you to be able to just do more things now. And it's a lot of the cards that they are getting in this set, uh, Minerva and Angelica, already are self-sufficient by themselves. Plus you have Witch Chamomile and Orange. They're so good. They're so good already. So I'm putting her like in between Cyrus Snow and Gravidia. I think she even might be a little bit better. But I need to see her in action. Put up numbers to see what she can actually do. A lot of people hyping up Maelstrom. I'm not too impressed by it yet. I need to get clapped by it a couple of times to see how powerful it is. I think it can be really powerful. Especially with like Inland Pulse being able to draw more cards and stuff and you being able to manipulate your restands and stuff like that. But you're, I feel you're pretty dependent on your personal right to actually get the numbers you care about. So I feel like you still need a bit more support to give you that extra push. A lot of these archetypes that I put up here are relatively self-sufficient, right? Like, uh, beat and above are relatively self-sufficient archetypes. All you need is like one to two cards. All the ones that are lower than this needs a combination of like two to three cards. Like three to four cards sometimes to get your full-off combo to go off. I think Eugene probably might be a little bit more self-sufficient now, especially with its like restander. But you're very in it's very important to get the sufficient soul charge you need to get the calls you want. And sometimes you just don't want to randomly soul charge, and your random soul charges does tend to hurt you a little bit. <laughs> so that's how I see the game, right? Like how I quantify tier lists is the fact that if a deck by itself can do its thing and rarely needs any outside assistance or outside help, to me it's a very good deck. So as you can see, Overlord just needs the promo and maybe Overlord. Eva just needs Eva and maybe upscaled. The orders are part of its mechanic already, so you're already running them. And everything else is just fluff. Everything else is just self-sufficient stuff it's doing. Inlet, yeah, very good. Very good card. And then you have Youth Book. It's just good already. Then you have uh, Rocks. All you're playing is like 10 orders to 12 orders. Nuking your opponent's board. The Minerva support, all Minerva stuff. Sarah Snow, you see the trend here? Baron Magnus, same trend. Like, all these are archetypes that just kinda do the thing outside of the box. You don't have to, like, finagle weird combinations of cards together to make them work. And then here are low on the list, this kinda needs a bit more help. Needs, like, one to two orders, plus maybe a Persona Ride sometimes. You're roaming Prison Dragons, but when you get the Injured rolling, it, it kinda outoils everybody because it draws a bunch of cards. Leonor, kinda the same deal. Uh, Bruce, sorta the same deal as well. Kyrie, same thing, Bruce, same thing, Leonard, same thing, Arakite, all these suffer from some of the same issues. You need kind of like two to three cards, and three of the cards need to be specific things you need to start your engine, right? Uh, then we have Gram Grace. Uh, Gram Grace does not have the grade three promo that we have yet. <laughs> we need we need the grade three promo for this archetype, so right now it's going to be around here in Eugene tier. <laughs> Then we have Gear Chronicle. When that comes out relatively soon, it is also S tier. I think it's possibly higher than everybody else, but I think it does not automatically beat everyone else. Uh, this one, I don't know what this one is. I think this is Mimi. Uh, Lucretia, I think Lucretia is also pretty up here as well. Uh, this one, I don't know this one. Panda, I don't know this one. I don't know this one. I know this one. This one I heard is a very good archetype, right? I think this one goes into A. Because this one does like multi attacks and restandings and stuff. Uh, Ibisu, we don't have Monster Strike, so we'll leave that out. And then Yo is still a pretty good deck. But I'm going to put it in the B tier. Because it can beat some people some of the time, but not all of the time. And then I think Red Zorga and Blue Zorga kind of facilitate the same facets, so I'll just put them next to each other. <laughs> Abandon all lyrical deck? No, I mean, I know which ones are good. Like, I know Lucretia is good, and I know Mimi is good. These two are. Two of the best archetypes that I know so far that are going to be played a whole lot, especially as like your third slot, <coughs> you can do really well with these. And there's no Orphus Regis, but if there was Orphus Regis, I guess I could put Orphus. Orphus is going to be around Zorga, like around here. I think it's, yeah, around this level. Uh, or even A, actually. Like the lower end of A. You can bully people and beat people, 
if they think that your hand is garbage, you fill it, you filter through your deck like super hard, and you you can uh, you don't really care about any of your cards being retired. But at the end, it's a kind of anti-meta out against Jet. <coughs> because you can kind of stay it on your grade 2 turn, activate an order, and then you can get your Combine Rusher to go off still. And like still pressure your opponent with a bunch of grade 2s and stuff. So if this was to be Orphus Regis, I feel that this is still pretty good. So it's the lower end of A, higher, t higher end of B. Yeah, it just has like relatively no shield sometimes. But it's a very good pressuring deck. But it, as again... These, these archetypes in B tends to lose to itself because it needs too many combinations of cards to work. It's not impossible to beat anyone. So I will preface this again. Anything lower than A requires too many cards to work. <laughs> like too many things together to make it work. It's not that you can't beat anybody, it's just it's harder to beat everybody else. And again, Chaos possibly might be... Our type I'm underestimating. What else I might be underestimating as well? Rorowa, I might be as well. I might be underestimating Jujuled. But as I said, it doesn't mean that Jujuled is completely bad. It just means that you're very focused around Rakugor. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, that was shown in the world's files for standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was the video for today. Thank y'all for watching, thank y'all for tuning in, and stopping on by. If you want to see me live when I stream on twitch.tv forward slash Rogers, you can catch me there. Um, my days are kind of infrequent because I'm trying to focus a little bit more on my YouTube content. We're kind of close to the 700 subscribers, so if you can give us a subscribe, I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate you. So, <laughs> take care. Uh, I love you. In